My favorite memory with ELPL would probably be the first time I walked in with this very convoluted file and Eric was like, oh yeah, we can totally do that. Like, I'm super excited about this project. Um, and we were able to make something awesome. My name is Henry Murad. Um, I'm a freelance uh, video editor who's got a passion for wet plate photography. Uh, I'm just getting into it myself, and uh, over the past few months, I've been designing a camera uh, with the help of Eric um, and the East Lansing Cooker. So I was gifted this antique um, Kodak Eastman 2D camera uh, when I graduated college. It's sort of been sitting uh, in my project pile um, because the bellows, which is kind of the accordion uh, box that allows the camera to focus, uh, had a bunch of holes in it because, you know, it's like old leather from you know, 1920. So I basically had two options. I could either pay like $300 or so and get custom bellows, or there was some really interesting um, people online who had made their own. So I decided to go down that road. I found a website that generated bellows uh, for my camera frame. Um, and then I brought those designs uh, to Eric at the East Lansing Library. And we basically went ahead and translated those designs into laser cutting files, sort of cut them out of cardstock, and then I was able to take those cardstock uh, ribs and make full-on bellows out of uh, nylon cloth. Okay, so uh, this is the camera. Uh, right up here, this is the lens board. Um, so I designed this in Illustrator, then we sent the file over to the laser cutter and cut it out of wood, and it's uh, removable. And it's basically just a multi-layer construction, so I can like put the lens in and basically unscrew it if I want and put a different lens in. And then it fits in, like that. And with this camera, um, normally you focus with the lens on most cameras, but this one you focus by moving the lens back and forth. And all the bellows are doing, like these are the bellows, uh, these bellows just allow a dark space to focus on. Um, this is the little viewport where you can see through. As you can see, this is like old. <laughs> um, needed to be a bit darker, but I can show... Can you see that on the camera? A little bit. I can see light. Cool. Yeah, it's showing the door. Yeah, so that's basically how it focuses. You move the bellows back and forth, and then um, you can focus on the screen right there. That's so cool. And then these are um, how I load the filming. So this basically goes right in here. And then I can lift this up. And this prevents light from getting in. So when I lift it up like that, I take the photo, put it back down, take it out, and then I can open it, take the film out, and develop it. Very cool. And then with this camera, the film is these metal sheets. So you have these metal sheets. That's it. Metal sheets. And then I'll put chemical on this side, the emulsion. Fit it in right here. These springs hold it in. Very cool. Yeah. And you said this camera is from like the 1920s, it's like 100 years old. Yeah, so this badge right here, um, this is kind of how I know all the information, but it's Eastman Kodak 2D. Um, and this is the same like Kodak that's still around today. Um, they make a ton of film. Uh, and they used to make like really nice old field cameras like these. 
And this camera has like a lot of cool features. Um, you know, you can tilt the film plane. Oh, cool. So what that does is normally like you can only focus in two dimensions with a regular camera. But with this, you can, if this is where the image is focused, you can actually tilt the film so that the area of focus is like a little sliver. And then that can create, um, if you've ever seen like Sherlock, the title intro for that, it looks like little miniature people are kind of wrong, like a dollhouse effect. Uh, that's how you can create that effect, because you're creating like a warped plane of focus. Very cool. And then these are the bellows. And these are what you were printing? Yeah, so these, these were all cut. Um, so if I extend it all the way out, I can show you a bit better. But basically, um, these ribs right here, like these trapezoids, are what um, Eric helped me cut out of paper on the um, laser cutter. And there's like, you know, probably about a hundred or so of them. So normally you'd have to use an X-Acto knife and like cut them all out by hand, and they might be irregular. With a laser cutter, it's like super easy to do. And then you just glue them onto this fabric. And you can kind of see, like, I'm trying to find. This side's kind of nice, but there's certain spots where it's kind of bumpy, where the adhesion didn't go well. And then this area, I had to basically put a little sleeve onto um, to make it connect. Oh, and this is the other thing. I totally kind of forgot about this. So, um, I. You come around to this side. We also cut out magnetic um, bellows holders. So you can pop out here. So I could pop these out if I wanted to change them out to like a later design, um, or if I wanted to do like a wide angle bellows. And if you see here, these are little neodymium magnets, so they can latch on. And then now it's like tape. That's so cool. I can easily swap them without having nice few stuff. I've kind of always been interested in doing DIY stuff, um, like making my own projects. But this has been like the first really big project. And <laughs> while I was working on it, I was like, I should have just paid the $300 <laughs> to get order fellows. Because this was, it was very complicated. Um, the laser cutting was probably the easiest part, but you have to use contact adhesive to um, connect the fabric to the ribs, and that's just awful to work with. I don't have good technique. Um, it, I would just, <laughs> I had to like spray it down and then like leap over it with this huge piece of fabric and like pat it down. Um, so the bellows right now are not the prettiest bellows, it's not what I imagined in my head, but they do work, they're light tight, they just don't close all the way, like the camera used to be able to close and fold up, but now it's just kind of half closed. But it works, and that's kind of all I wanted from it. I think this is like one of the first libraries where I've been able to engage fully with a makerspace. Um, I've lived in some places before that have had a makerspace, but this is the first one that felt like fully accessible, like um, it, it was just super easy to get started, to you know, make anything you want really. Um, and Eric or Dr. B is just like super helpful and engaged and can get you started in whatever direction you want to go, whatever project you want to go. I really appreciated Eric's help on all this, like he really um, was super enthusiastic about the project idea from the get-go. Um, put in like a ton of hours and you know pointed me to a ton of resources and really helped me through the process of like prototyping and cutting um, and there's like a million little uh, bumps along the way that he really helped me like get over um, and I'm really appreciative to have this workspace and be able to um, you know use the facilities here at the Science Center. Beyond just the makerspace, I you know, love coming to the library to work. Um, it's very rare these days to have a space where you can exist in that you don't have to buy something in. Um, so I really love that aspect of libraries. And I think, you know, having the digital resources, the, you know, physical resources of books, and 
these new like tool libraries and makerspace facilities just makes the library uh, such a boost to the community. Like anybody could come in if they have like a small business idea and like prototype stuff. I know that you know people have come in needing like very specific parts that have been really expensive to get, and they get them like 3D printed. You know, um, it's just a wonderful place to like come and work and innovate and create. I use Canopy to uh, stream and watch a bunch of really interesting uh, movies, you know, some kind of old classics, some really indie stuff, um, you know, a bunch of A24 films. Um, yeah, love Canopy. Uh, yeah, and I just, uh, I love being able to come and work and find a quiet space to work on projects, come up with new designs, do some editing. So if you had to describe the library in three words, what would they be? say accessible, bright, and fun. <laughs> Very thankful for ELPL and for all the resources it provides.